What's going on? What's going on? Hey, what's going on, guys? See some BAM hats in there? Love it, fellas. Let's go. Who's got the cool emojis? Hand clap. Thumbs up. A bunch of nine-year-olds taught me this, like, uh, nice. You got the regular one um, a long time ago. Or not a long time, a couple weeks ago. Jake, how are you doing? Good, man. How about you? Good. We should be good to go. I upgraded to the 500. Perfect. So we're over 100 now, so we should be... Everything should be good. I'm just admitting everyone in here just to make sure there's no yep. crazy Zoomers. Hey, so many pages of people. You guys rock. We're showing out. <laughs> Let's go. This is sweet. It's 101 people. That'll play. Wow. 101 will play. Right. Hey, looks Who's like the best looking out of the whole group? <laughs> I think it's got to be a band back. Hat. Mookie in the back of Brandon's is pretty good. Mookie looks good. Yeah, I see you, Brando. Oh, I like that. Let's go. Someone yeah. with the name of Poops joining in. We got LJ oh, looking God, ugly yeah. as ever. What up, LJ? Uh, <laughs> the big news today. Uh, Ronnie, you got to go off uh, off mute. Sorry. So, 20, 20 policies. Adam, Tommy, what's up, guys? Nice, let's go. How see, cool who else is this? Who else we got in here? All right, I think we're just waiting for Brad and... Well, why are we using his... Why am I, what? Who's showing us your math homework? Val, well, that's... Never mind. That's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Hey. I don't do math. I'm sorry, fellas. Yeah, I yeah, wish yeah, I yeah. could. I mean, yeah, six plus four plus three equals two. That's our kind of math right there. <laughs> yeah, get that out of here. What All we right. got? Luca, what you got going on, man? What's going on, fellas? What's up? What's up? Look at you, nice decorated background. I got nice white walls. Looks like I'm a crazy person. That's good. <laughs> How's it going, man. Austin? Adam, how are you, man? Good to see you. You too. Hi, Rob. What's up? What's up? <laughs> what's up? <laughs> Isaac, how we living? What's up, guys? Cool. cool. So thanks for hopping on, everybody. I don't want to. We don't want to take too much of your time. Um, we wanted to. If you guys can mute your mics for me, please. That'd be um, awesome too. Cool stuff, um, except for you, Jake and Ronnie and, and Adam. You guys were all Austin. Right what's up? Ronnie, how we living, man? I'm good, Eric? man. How are you? Eric, hope you had hey. a good birthday, buddy. Dude, we got a, We got so many guys on here, man. It's awesome. We got. Dude, this is so cool. John and Logan, love it, love it. Caleb's in here. Eli's in here. We got. Adam, Kyle. Luke, you're still, you're still like, nice, Wick. You five were prestigiously selected. Luca, what's up, dude? Blaze, quarantine's treated you bad, man. You look rough. <laughs> this is going to be our kickoff. Um, kind of Tiernan, what's going on, dude? Miles is in here. Up? Oh, Big X. Man, we got guys. Squad keeps growing. Uh, and we Luca, keep helping stops. this. We keep helping Luca with his math homework. I don't know, Luca. <laughs> uh, Bro just needs a little help with algebra, man. Let him, let him rip. <laughs> I respect it. <laughs> That's good. Here. Big Tux, yeah. what's up, dude? Austin, is my brother in this thing yet? Um, yeah, I don't know. Can you guys hear me? Connor, yeah, you still yeah, sweating hear you now. over there? Hear you. We got an yeah, ace yeah. hat in there. Let's go, Ethan. Connor took a thermogenic for the first time today. He's been sweating his butt off all day. <laughs> this is sweet, man. Let's go. Well, we can go ahead and get started here at, at 105. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give it two more minutes for some. Cool. some Garrick, of what's up? To come in. Gino, how we living? Where's your Matt and Derek? At? What's up? What's up? What's up? Jim Quill's in here. No, if you can see everybody, oh, I'm, I'm talking as if you can hear me, but 
Yeah. Colt, what up, dude? Let's go. Colt, what up, dude? This is awesome. Um, Tommy Hall's in. Tommy Hall's in. What's up, Tommy? You know what I mean? Tommy. Tommy's my guy. Brian and Adam, what's up, guys? Cool. Jojo. Now you can say something. <laughs> Jojo's in. Jojo's in. What's up, Jojo? See Nolan, big big stick Nolan joining us. That's good. Man, this is great. There are so many people. Yeah, y'all showed out. This is awesome. Numbers keep climbing. 177. Jared Barry, I see you. Xavier, what's going on, man? Nicholas, what's up? Adam, find Blaze because Blaze is looking what's rough. <laughs> <laughs> I try to avoid looking at Blaze as much as I possibly can. That's why we stick him in Gino. right field. Can't see him out there. Anthony, what's up, dude? Man, we got a bunch of Kyuga guys in here right now. Anthony, what's going on? Yeah. You got to watch out for Anthony Savino, man. I'm telling you, this guy's gonna, this guy's gonna be in the big leagues one day. Oof. Let's go. Watch you could, out uh, sign your autograph in the chat. That'd be sweet. That's right. Braden Hyde. Yeah, yeah. send us a baseball. Right. Go on. Yeah. I'll send text you my address. Man. Let's do it. Um, well, we're going to get rolling. Go on, you look like your dad. <laughs> we'll get rolling, fellas. Um, as anybody else comes in, I'll just add them into the wait list. If we can mute our mics, if, if you're not – uh, one of the few that I'll be speaking, if you just mute our mics just so we don't get any of that background feedback in, that'd be awesome. Um, other than that, Randy, Gino, I see you guys. Love it. Let's go. Um, this is so cool. We've got people from as far west as northwest in Washington, San Francisco, all the way up to Buffalo, New York. We have Connecticut in here. I think one's in Rhode Island. Um, obviously, the Midwest, going to Indianapolis. Chicago, Texas, Alabama. This is so cool. Look how beautiful the baseball world can become when we all come together just to learn. Um, open minds here to get better and learn. So um, I think it's awesome that we're making the most out of this time. My name is Austin Byler. I run Major League University. I'm out here on the West Coast from Arizona, living between here in the Bay Area, which is Northern California and San Francisco, doing some baseball things at both, both different locations. We do a lot of work with the middle game. So we work with athletes teams, organizations, et cetera, um, through the middle side of the game, through peak performance, leadership, all the above, and then also coaching the high school program up in the Bay Area as well. So got a few different things going on on my plate. That's just a little bit of my background. Played at the University of Nevada, Reno. Some of you may know what it is on the West Coast. If you're on the East Coast, you probably have no idea. And then got to go play for the Arizona Dimebacks for a few years before retiring and then started Major League University. And um, this is just awesome, guys. This is so cool. We had a vision to just bring people together. What can we do during this time where everybody's stuck at home? None of us can go on a baseball field. We've all got really cool names on our, on our little chats here. And it's just so cool to see the different hats and the different countries and, or sorry, different states represented, different coaches in here that are able to give some different feedback and the different age groups because we're all here to learn. And I think anyone in here can take something out of what we're going to talk about today as far as becoming a really good teammate and, and developing a winning mentality and a winning culture and all the above. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to pass it off to Jake. Uh, you can go ahead and introduce yourself, uh, kind of who you guys are, what you guys do, and uh, we can get rolling into Ronnie as well. Awesome. So my name is Jake Vanwert. I am uh, head coach at Perry Meridian High School in Indianapolis. Um, also, um, one of the co-owners and president of Baseball and Fast Pitch Academics Mid Midwest. So we run um, about 25, 26 teams out of the Indianapolis area, um, out of a facility on the south side there. So um, we're going into about year five of the program and uh, really focus on player development mentally and physically in our off-season program. Um, partnered with uh, Austin and Ronnie with Hot Corner and Major League University to uh, do something more global and really special for you guys um, from this Dugout Coalition name. So we're excited that you guys are here. I would say first piece of, of advice as we get going in this, two things. Um, number one, have something in front of you to just jot down notes. That can be a phone. Um, there might be some things said that, that you want to remember later on. So that would be really good for you. Um, as we go through this. And then two, use that chat. 
Um, don't just fill the chat with random things, but if you guys have questions about what we're talking about with this many people in here, you're gonna stay muted um, for the most part, but fill the chat with questions that you guys have. Um, start to build connections with some of the other players in here. It'd be awesome for you guys to make a couple friends from other states and different teams and all that. So utilize your resources. We're all one community coming together for, for a common cause and a big goal here to help you guys train for these next four weeks. So anything that we can do, um, we want to do. And then before I forget, I'm going to put in the chat as Ronnie starts um, or Adam starts going through intros. Um, I'm going to put in the chat the link to our Facebook page. Um, every single day during these four weeks, we're going to post out afterwards just some videos of um, different speakers or different clips that might really fit kind of what we talked about and some of the different mentality aspects that we're covering. So um, that link would bring you right to that. Um, and then also just give it a follow on Facebook. That way, um, as we come out with new products and new programs, that kind of stuff, you guys are updated from that as well. All right, the Instagram I'll put in there uh, as well. So you guys can have access to all that social media. I know a lot of you found us through um, social media, but we'll throw all that in there. And the more that you can help spread this as we're getting it off the ground, um, the better it'll be. So would love your guys' help on that. But we're excited to be here. We're excited to get rolling with it. And I think you guys are in for 20 hours of training or four weeks of training over some stuff that could really change your mindset um, and also change the physical aspects of the way that you guys are playing to, to really get you to that next level. So excited to be here. All right, guys. Uh, my name is Ronnie Burnick. I'm with um, Hot Corner Athletics in Buffalo, New York. Um, you know, we have – we've probably worked with probably over, you know, 1,000, 1,500 kids over the last four years that we've been open. Um, we are big into the sp skill development for all athletes. We're big into sports performance training. Um, we do have a performance center that is specifically uh, for athletes to work on their strength conditioning, um, to work on their mobility work. Uh, you know, so for some of you older guys that are starting to get into weightlifting, I mean, we definitely work into uh, the mobility stuff too. Um, and, and our biggest thing when we came together to do the dugout coalition, when I talked to Austin and Jake was, how can we provide value to as many people in the country, in the world that we can? Um, we definitely have a huge following here in Buffalo, New York, uh, but it's definitely try we're trying to grow it all over the place to reach as many people as we can. So with Austin with the mental side of the game and with Jake with the team process and mental side of the game and then with us with the skill development and sports performance, our goal behind this whole thing isn't to just give you guys um, some things that you can take here and there. It's to give you the whole package. And so our biggest thing is the six-tool training where we're not just going to hit you guys skill-wise, um, but we definitely want to make sure that you guys are getting better in every part of life. I mean, I know we use baseball as our platform, but we want to be able to give you guys as much value as we can, not just in the game. How can you guys take – what we're doing in the game of baseball and, and bring it into your lives, into your schoolwork, into your relationships and everything that, that you guys do within your life. So our goal behind this isn't to just create better baseball players, but it's to create better humans as well. And I think that's how we're going to get into this first week and talk about some of this stuff is, you know, what's your attitude like? How are you with your teammates? Um, are you allowing your performance to be the reason why you're a good teammate or a bad teammate? And those are the things that we're going to get into with this whole thing on top of, skills and and taking care of your bodies and things like that so like i said earlier we're super super excited for this opportunity uh we can't wait to go on this journey with you guys and, and see how this goes over the next four weeks 100 percent, fellas 100 percent. adam do you want to introduce yourself as well yeah sure might as well so going on guys uh, i'm coach galker i'm with jake bam we're over here at uh, bam fam and uh, i'm a varsity coach on the south side as well at lutheran high school uh, I'm mainly super excited about this. The fact that we've already got almost 200 people on here and the locations that everybody's coming from. Uh, not only are we going to be on here teaching, but I'm excited to be on here learning from everybody else and getting a huge variety of perspectives of how things are done when it comes to team building, mental training, physical skills within baseball. Like the amount of knowledge that's going to be floating around on here is very exciting. So guys, like Jake said, use that chat bar. If you have questions in the middle of us talking about something, don't be afraid to chime in. We want this to be interactive. Hopefully we'll get to all of them, but uh, really take notes, pay attention. There's going to be a lot of good stuff going around here. Uh, I'm excited to learn just as much as teach guys. It's going to be a lot of fun. Absolutely. Sorry, I thought my mic was muted. Um, if you are, if you are one of the participants in here and your mic is on right now, if you could just please hit, click that little mute button at the bottom left of the screen, just to make sure that we don't get any of that feedback. I know 
Um, we've all got families. My family's on the phone right now. We've got a lot of people in different areas. So just so we can kind of limit that. But no, this is incredible, guys. We're super fired up. And to kick it off, this first week's more about laying the foundation, right? I think in anything that you do, you've got to build a foundation for success, especially in baseball. Baseball can be really, really, really hard. And the coaches that you get to learn from have played at very high levels between high school, college, professionally, and now coach at very high levels as well and have been in each one of these steps in the shoes of the place that you want to go. And so the biggest part, the biggest piece of advice, I guess, on my end to offer you is that growth mindset, having an abundant mindset. And what that means is having an open mind to everything that's coming along here. You don't have to use every single thing that's thrown around, but maybe one thing that you hear really just clicks and it lights a switch on you. It's like, man, I could really take that into my game right away. Like I could use this to help me become not only a better athlete, but a better person. Because what you're going to find out is baseball ends one day. But the lessons that you learn throughout baseball are going to set you up for so much more success and so much further than the other people around you. I mean, when you get into the real world, you're going to be ready to go uh, locked in and just more confident with who you are. And that's what this is all about is laying that foundation for you to be successful. So without further ado, we're going to get into this thing. And we're starting off with how do we develop a winning attitude? And like, what is a winning mentality? So Jake, I'm going to let you kind of kick the reins off on this and then we can bounce it back and forward. But a winning mentality, man, how do you develop a winning mentality? And what are some things you're looking for in an athlete that's, that's maybe not as confident as they wish they were right now? Yeah, great questions. I think one big thing where a lot of our young athletes start to fail is you guys have to understand that how you do anything is how you do everything. Right. So you can't just flip that switch and say, hey, today I'm going to really focus on this and then not focus on something else. So we want to give our best effort in everything that we do, whether that's school, sports, being a good a good friend, a good sibling, whatever that is for you. Um, we got to have that same mindset in every aspect of our life in order to really push ourselves forward to be successful. And I think, you know, great people have great attitudes and great teammates have great attitudes. So if you want to be those things we got to get into like, how do you develop a great attitude? What does that look like? Um, and the reality is it's a choice. So a lot of times we think that the attitude is, our attitude is a result of our circumstance, but we have to take circumstance out of it, right? Because we don't control that. So the reality is you have a choice based on the circumstances that you're presented with to either have a good attitude and figure out how to get past a hurdle that you're facing or to just kind of wither away and decide to have a bad attitude and make excuses, okay? so. That doesn't mean that you're always going to like the role that you have, whether that's in a project, at school, on a team, but you have to learn to accept whatever that is and still make the best of that to be successful. Okay. It's as simple as perspective. So you could either think of yourself as a bench warmer because you're not starting or think of yourself as a starter in training and prepare like you're a starter and be ready for that moment when it comes. Okay. So one of the best things I've heard um, over the last six months from coach Matt Deggs, he said, if your presence doesn't make an impact, your absence won't make a difference. So I think one of the big reflection points from my end for you guys is think about, you know, from your team aspect, what presence do you have at practice in games and the way that you train, um, whatever mentality you're giving off to your teammates and to your coaches, but what do you have that's making an impact? And if the answer is nothing right now, then right, you're currently wasting time because there's no impact or difference that you're making on your team. So if you weren't there, nothing would change, right? So we wanna make sure everybody's role will be different, but in the attitude that you develop, that you're finding a way to impact your team and impact the lives around you and whatever you do. So that way, if you're not there, that absence makes a huge difference in the people that you're investing in. I totally agree, Jake. I totally agree. You mentioned the roles and that's something that I really wanted to hit on was embracing your role and accepting your role and not just accepting yep. it, but taking pride in it. Now, yep. not everybody's a three hole power hitter. I wish we were all big left-handed donkeys who hit bombs or we were all left-handed <clears throat> pitchers who threw 95, but guess what? The reality of things is not all of us are either there yet or some of us won't ever get there due to size, due to area, et cetera, whatever it may be that, that's in your area. But guess what? We can embrace our roles as an athlete. And I think that's one of the biggest things that we have to develop a winning mentality. It's team first. Right. Like, yeah. how do we get to the team first mentality? If you had to ask yourself right now, and you can think about it right now and just ask yourself, hey, how many times after a strikeout was I pouting or was I upset or did I throw my helmet? No matter what level we're at, whether we're youth, youth or we're in high school, it happens all the way. When I played, I did the same thing up until I was a freshman in college. I threw my bat. I yelled a bad word. I told somebody else they sucked. And then I, I pouted. It was a poor me attitude. 
But the biggest thing we can do as athletes is how do we embrace that failure and accept our role with pride? So whether you're the guy who comes in off the bench and runs the bases because you're super fast, like speed, and you just get around there and you can make things happen, there's a lot of value in that. There's a lot of good things that can happen because of that. Or maybe you're the guy in the middle of the lineup that's there to drive in RBIs and you know your role. My role is to get up there and to drive people in. Or maybe you're a really good defender and you play great defense. You're the rock solid shortstop. Maybe you don't hit as good as you wish you did yet, right? Yet, keyword, but you're accepting your role as the best defender on the team. And, and the last point that I want to make would be understand that you are the best one at your role. Like you're the best one on the field at what you do. Like nobody else out there is a better pitcher than you. Nobody else out there is a better hitter than you, a better fielder, a better base runner, a better athlete, a better person. Knowing and trusting in your confidence that you know everything you've done and worked for and practice in the games, before games, et cetera, is ready and setting you up for success. And that's the biggest thing when you're, when you're developing that winning mentality is what can I do to help the team win? And that might be laying down a beautiful drag bunt to get a rally start in the bottom of the seventh inning to win a game, right? Like it's sacrificing our selfish side to be selfless and to help the team win. Because when the team wins, I can guarantee you really good things happen. Because for you high school kids that are in here, you want to go to college. And the young cat, you young cats want to get, and you guys want to go to college as well. But guess what? You high school kids are close to getting to that point. But the more your team wins, the more you get seen. The more you get seen, the more opportunities you get to go to college. So knowing that anything that we do every single day is to help the team win in whatever aspect that is, is so big for our teams. Um, Jake, or sorry, Jake, Ronnie, I don't know if you want to add to that and, and anything that you got on your mind. Yeah, so I was just going to get into the point. I, I spent two years coaching in college, and I remember, vividly remember saying each year, what teams are we going to go watch? And most of the time, it, it was the teams with the kids that had the good attitudes. It wasn't just one player. It was good teams. You know, we're, we're not going to watch one specific player. A lot of times when you go to a field and you see a team of, of 10, 12 kids who all have the same goal in mind, those are the kids you end up taking. You know, you're taking – you're taking – team or kids from the same teams every year and the reason why is because of the way that those teams are molded it's the way that those kids act every single day and I remember I would go see the same team four five six seven times a year the reason for that is because I want to see how those kids develop I know that they're in the right team process I know that they're learning from the right people and I want to be around those people more because those are the kids that are going to help my program grow and and the attitude is contagious and that was a big thing I want to talk individually is attitude is extremely contagious if you're the guy that's throwing the helmet, you can almost guarantee that if another kid on your team is looking at you acting that way, that they're going to think it's okay to act that same way. And that's the one thing that we talk about a lot at Hot Corner. Like we're big on making sure that kids hold themselves to a higher standard, not even on a, on a skill performance level. It's more on how are you carrying yourself? Yep. You know, is it you that I want to go watch 15 times? There are going to be times that I'm going to go watch a kid and he's going to go over four. I'm not looking at him for how he's, how he's performing skill wise. I'm already there because he's good enough. And that's the one thing I want a lot of you guys to understand. If, if we're coming to watch you, if you're a college, college coach is coming to watch you, you're already good enough. It's how you're carrying yourself. Do I want this kid to, to be on my team? Because as a senior, he's going to help those freshmen and sophomores get better. You know, is he going to be the guy that's going to come in and, and make our team better, not just batting 300? Is he going to make the younger guys better around him? And I think that's a one big point that I want to give is, if we're coming to watch you, you're already good enough. That's number one. Number two, are you the guy that I want in the dugout when you're not playing? That's the one thing I learned as a player is, you know, you're not going to be on the field every single day, but can you make your team better when you're on the bench and when you're on the field? Some days you're going to have to be a really good teammate. Some days you're going to have to go and be the guy that's given the high five. Are you a good teammate that day? The same day that you're on the field, the one that's batting third, you know, trying to score all the runs. You know, those are the kind of guys that we're looking for. You know, I mean, skill is only one part of this game. And I think the reason why we started with attitude, number one, is because attitude creates everything else for you. You know what I mean? And I think that that's the big point to take away from today. You're spot on, Ronnie. You're spot on with the attitude aspect, man. How you carry yourself. Leaders, they don't, they don't hang their heads. They don't slump the shoulders. They don't talk negatively about their teammates or blame the coaches for the responsibilities. that they're, they, they accept responsibility. They take ownership. They understand that. Yeah. All of my results are strictly due to what I've done um, as an athlete and, and my preparation, you know, like how I've prepared to get to this point to be successful. Um, I love that. Adam, do you got anything to add on to that, man? You're, you're coaching in high school as well and you're leading a program. I don't know if there's anything that pops to your mind with any of the athletes that you work with that you've noticed. 
Yeah, like what, what I love that all three of you guys touched on individually was you all touched on failure and how guys carry themselves within that. And then also how they're going to also handle success when they do something well for the team. Uh, when all this stuff was going on, I explained to some of the players that I had to talk to, especially seniors and uh, maybe some younger classmen at the high school level, that the way that you carry yourself needs to be somewhere in the middle of tragedy and triumph because that tragedy and triumph or that success and failure, those are both temp all temporary things. And everything that we do and how we carry ourselves has to be somewhere in the middle. If we're always carrying ourselves, thinking about the negative things that are going on, the things that we failed at, or always only carrying ourselves, uh, only focused on the successful things we've done, we're not living within the actual area that we're in most of the time. And that's when, like Ronnie, you were talking about going and seeing how people develop. Like college coaches not only want to see you do successful things, but they want to see how do you carry yourself in the middle of all of that? When you talk about having somebody on your team and in the dugout with you, who's going to, what kind of guy or do you have next to you in your foxhole when things are going wrong? I mean, I love baseball because even when you're doing very, very well, you're still failing 70% of the time and you're failing obviously more than when you are succeeding. So how are you going to carry yourself within that tragedy in order to get you that triumph? You have to be able to be in the middle somewhere. And I think that, if you can focus on not living or dying in either one of those areas and be in that middle, that you, that winning mentality is going to be a lot easier to sustain over the long run. It's a really good point you make there. It's about living in the middle. Like how do we stay in the present? It's really hard to get there. And there's a lot of things that we can do to help uh, get ourselves there more consistently. But at the end of the day, it's really tough to do. And that's why the most consistent yeah. athletes make it to the big leagues, right? It's not the most talented athletes in the world that ever make it to the big leagues. Like, don't ever think that for, for a minute. It's the most consistent athletes on a consistent basis that prepare like champions every single day that end up making it there. I've seen some guys that we played with who were big donkeys, Dominicans, hitting 500-foot bombs and BP at 5 o'clock, but when the game turns around, they're hitting 160 with no RBIs and no hits. Like, there, there's a correlation here of how our mind works to help set us up for success. So I think the biggest thing to take away from this guy when you're developing that winning mentality is how do we support our teammates, be a good teammate. And you hear be a good teammate a lot. I'm sure a lot of your coaches have told you, hey, be a good teammate. Well, how, right? How can we be a good teammate? So here's a few little things that we can do. One, pick your, pick your teammate up. Say you're playing third base and your shortstop got out after a fly ball to left center and you're on the bench still. Pick up his glove, run it out to him. That's being a good teammate. Some of you older guys in high school offer to uh, clean his cleats, right? Hey, I'll clean your cleats. Clean your cleats for you. Um, being a good teammate is supporting somebody when they maybe failed. So if somebody strikes out for the third time in the game and it sucks and everybody's yelling, hat trick, hat trick. Oh, they're throwing hats at him <laughs> like a hockey game, right? Like, well, guess what? When that happens, we have a really good opportunity to pick up our teammates and to help our teammates succeed through this tough time, right? Like in failure come your greatest pleasures. Like the greatest things in your life are gonna happen due to your failures. I can guarantee that no matter what, it's really hard to see that in the moment. But just going back on my life, and I know these guys would attest to the same thing, when you have a lot of failure, you now learn how to grow and you learn how to get through those failures to set you up for success. So I'm understanding that each time you fail, you're one step closer to your dream, one step closer to getting to where you want to be and one step closer to, to being the athlete that you want to be. But understanding when those things do happen, that like, what is this teaching me? Right? Like if you don't learn anything else here and the next time you fail, the next time you strike out five times in the game or make 17 errors or, or you miss the bus trip or you have a terrible tournament and you go 0 for 5 and coach benches you and you, you, maybe you haven't gotten to play the whole tournament and you just get a pinch run. Ask yourself, what is this teaching me? I don't care if you're eight or nine years old or if you're 16, 17 or if you're one of us coaches. Like we can ask ourselves the exact same thing. What is this moment teaching me? What can I learn from this moment that's going to help me get to where I want to be? Because no matter what happens, we're all at different stages in our development. Maybe next year you grow five inches or maybe you start throwing 95. I know a buddy of mine, he was on JV as a sophomore pitcher and it was him versus Josh Taylor, Aaron Bummer versus Josh Taylor, two big leaguers right now. And it was the JV all-star game. It was two JV pitchers left-handed that were five, six at the time throwing 75 miles per hour. And two years later, they're both in, in the driver's seat to get drafted out of high school and then go play in college and get drafted. Now they're both in the big leagues, right? You never know what can happen. You never know when your time to develop is and when it's your call. 
but the best thing we can do is continue to work hard every day. It's in our control. So guys, I want to talk a little bit about controlling the controllables. I mean, we say it all the time, but what are some things that we can do? And we'll start with you, Jake, to develop that winning mentality and to control the things that are within our control and not outside of our control. Yeah, I think that's great. I think the, the big place to start is understanding how we communicate. Um, a lot of times you think you have a good attitude because you know, you're, you're trying to still hustle and do that, but your facial, facial expression, your tone of voice is telling a different story than what you're trying to give off. So number one step is to understand that body language is over 50% of the way that we communicate, right? So 55% of all communication comes from your body language. So if Ronnie were to come to your game to recruit for a college, and he sees you out in the field kicking dirt and walking back and forth yelling into your glove, he doesn't have to listen to you talk and hear your words to know that you're mad about something, right? So what you project is what everybody else is going to take. So you need to be smart about what you're doing body language wise during the game because everybody sees that. The words you say is only 7%, right? So you can say something super positive. You've probably all done it to your siblings when your mom or dad tells you to apologize. You're like, sorry, and nobody believes that. So you got to adjust the way that you're saying it and watch that. The thing that Austin touched on a lot that I love is this idea of ownership, okay? If you think about everything we've discussed so far attitude-wise, never once have we said, you know, based on what your teammate does, okay, because you control you, right? You're the only person in charge of your actions and your thoughts and your words and your habits and you're the only person responsible for your success or failure. So the moment that you start to blame other people and the moment you start to look outside of yourself, then we lose the sense of internal ownership. So there's nothing for you to really gain from an attitude perspective. Okay, the big issue with that, a lot of times for players at your guys' age is parents. Okay, because you might be the best teammate in the world, even though you didn't get in the game, but then you get in the car driving home and mom and dad are telling you that you're better than Kevin who was playing shortstop that game and he struck out and you should have been in. So part of what you guys have to balance is being a good teammate and not letting parents, friends, anybody outside of your team penetrate that inner circle of what that team is. Because the moment you let that stuff get to your head and bring that back to your team is the moment that the team starts to separate, right? So you can listen. Sometimes there's good points. And mom and dad just want you to be successful. So they're speaking out of love. But sometimes it's not necessarily the best things for you. So when we look attitude, it's completely internal. And I think the big point um, is – that you need to figure out a way with your own attitude to empower your teammates to not be afraid to fail, right? Like what Austin said, if you fail and fail and fail, you're learning how to be successful. So our goal is if we're gonna fail, we wanna fail forward, right? If you keep failing forward, eventually you get to a point of success, but, but, but the moment you fail and then you just stop, we're not gonna grow from that. So it's learning from our failures, but it's also empowering our teammates, right? When you go up to hit, your goal is not to strike out. So neither is your teammates. So when they come back and you're like, man, you needed to swing at that pitch. Well, they know because they just struck out. So rather than that, think about this. If you went up to hit and you knew that everybody in your dugout was rooting for you and that they loved you as a teammate and they were going to empower you into your success. But if you failed, your relationship with teammates and coaches and all of that wouldn't change, then that would alleviate a lot of the pressure that's in your corner when you go up to hit. So you, can't, you have to understand your identity is not found in your at-bat or in your stat line from that game, okay? You're way more than that. So when you look at it from that perspective, then we start to understand like, hey, I want to be successful. I'm trying to do that. We're not going to be perfect. But when we can tell our teammates like, hey, man, you got the next one, right? Like you screwed up, wasn't a great at-bat, go get the next one. Then we start to build a culture around our team to where failure is, it's not accepted. We don't want it but we're also lifting each other up and picking each other up around that. And that's a huge piece to your attitude that then gives off to everybody else, right? So that's a presence that you can have is that your attitude can be contagious to everybody else on the team. Okay, we have at the high school, Matt, we had great senior leadership that never got to see the field this year with, with everything that happened. But true story, we had seniors look at a fret or a sophomore this year that showed up for lifting after not being there for like four days and they sent them home. I didn't have to do anything. They sent them home. They said, look, we love you and we're going to need you to be successful this season, but your commitment level right now isn't where we need it to be. So you can't stay. 
you're going to need to go home and think about this. And when you come back, we expect that if you come back, you're going to be giving it your all every single day consistently. Okay. So you can keep people accountable and you can keep yourself accountable, but we want to make sure that we do all of that from an attitude perspective out of love, because the moment we start to do that out of hate, or we start to do that out of resentment from somebody else, or the fact that we want a position that somebody else has, when that becomes our perspective, then we're starting to lose the goal, which is to build everybody up and raise that overall level of the team. Okay. So you can control or help your teammates. Okay. But you can't look externally for other people to control your attitude. Your attitude is independent and something that only you can have full control over. That's huge. That's huge, Jake. I, I love the aspect of leading out of love. And just for some of you guys, maybe even some younger guys, or even if so you don't really understand that, that's shouting praise. Like yep. acknowledging when somebody does something really cool. My shortstop made a really cool play in the hole, like a Derek Jeter play. And that was freaking awesome. I'm giving him a high five. I'm <coughs> hugging him on the eyes. He's coming off the field. We're picking him up. Like get fired up. Like enjoy your time together. This game is too short, way too short to be so caught up in the results. You mentioned the identity piece. We're gonna get in that to finish this thing off because I think that's a huge piece and it needs to be elaborated on a little bit for these athletes. But like the biggest thing with that is you're more than your results. Your results don't define who you are. Like you are so much more than that. You're a great student, you're a great kid, a great brother, a great friend, a great son. Um, maybe a great Fortnite gamer. You can do some cool dances. Maybe you do these cool emojis that pop up like this and you got a cool hand clap on them. Like who knows what you're really good at, but you're really good at something, right? So finding what you're good at, embracing the role like we talked about earlier, and then acting out of love. Love gives, man. I put in the chat in there, like you give energy, you receive energy. If you give energy to others, you're going to receive energy back. And the more good energy that you can put out, the more good energy you'll receive, which means the better you're going to play, the better you're going to feel, the more fun you're going to have. We have three rules, smile, laugh, have fun. None of those have anything to do with hit a home run, throw strikes, or make a really cool play. Eh, maybe make a cool play, but make an air, right? So some of these things are so simple, but we've got to really take ownership of it, right, Jake? You got to take ownership of it. Um, Ronnie, what do you got on this subject? Yeah, so I was just going to piggyback off of the controllables and what you were saying before. Like, there are a lot of things in the game that we cannot control. And as soon as we allow ourselves to be consumed by the things that we can't control, whether it's, you know, this has happened to me in the past where, you know, I had a really good week of practice and I still didn't crack the lineup. Like, that happens. You know, there are going to be sometimes you, – all you can do is just continue to work hard from there. You know what I mean? And, that, and same thing. Like, maybe, maybe the umpire expands his zone. Maybe it's getting dark outside, expands his zone, and there's a ball that you take for strike three that you don't think is a strike. There's absolutely nothing that you can do about that. All you can do is just learn from it, right? Understand that his zone is a little bigger for the next time when you get back in the batter's box, you can prepare for that, right? So there are a lot of things in this game that we can't control, but we can't, we're not able we, – we shouldn't focus on the things that we cannot control. We need to spend more time focusing on the things that we can't control. Show up to the field on time. You know what I mean? Get to the field early enough that you can get a good warm-up in, right? You control that. You know what I mean? Your teammates don't have to be there as early as you are. You control that, right? You control how much you work in the offseason. This is the one thing that I talk about with a lot of our athletes because we're more in the private skill work is you don't just have to hit one day a week in a private setting. You know, you, we need to make sure that we're, we're getting our work in, especially if you want to perform in the, when the season comes. You know, hit in your basement, hit in your garage, go outside, and especially with the Buffalo and New York guys. You know, it gets cold up here. You know, how are you still going to get your work in even when it's freezing cold outside, right? We still need to figure out a way. The things that we control is the amount of work that we put in, how much we hustle, when we show up to the field. You know, and I saw a really, really cool picture at the end when Vanderbilt won the national championship the last time. There was a senior. He just played his last game ever. And he was the last guy in the dugout picking up all the garbage. You know, no wonder Tim Corbin recruited that guy. You know, he might not have been the best player on the team that day, but that's a guy that he control. The thing that he can control is being a leader. So hopefully maybe there was a freshman or a sophomore on the team that saw that. You know, we control how clean our dugout is at the end of the game. Those are the things that you guys take control over. And if you look at the way like, the things that I'm talking about, it has absolutely nothing to do with a glove on, a ball in your hand, or a bat. None of it. You know, there's so there's so much more that goes into this game. All the performance stuff happens. It just happens. And there are sometimes you're going to hit an absolute seed and it's going to get caught. And there's sometimes you're going to get jammed, break your bat, and you're going to hit a single. That's part of it. But the things that we can control are those other intangibles. And I think that that's really what we need to start to focus on. And I think if we leave the, the performance out of it, we're going, to be, we're going to be a lot happier in this game. We're going to have a lot more fun, right? Because we, we mentioned this earlier. I think uh, it was Adam that mentioned this was uh, you're going to fail 70% of the time. So if we constantly look at our results, we're going to be really, really miserable playing this game. 
But if we can look at the things that we can control, we're going to have a lot of fun. Think about all the teammates and the people that you've met. You know, and, and I love this platform because I got to meet Austin and Jake through this whole thing. I mean, think about that. Baseball brought us together. It had nothing to do with how we performed. All of us had a completely different path playing the game. You know, but the things that we can control is the amount of value that we're giving to the kids. And I think that that's something that we, all of us as players and coaches can take out of this is what can we control, right? And we need to really put our time and effort into focusing on those things. And we're going to have a lot more fun, right? Mm, that's big time, Ronnie. I love that. Focusing on what you can do every single day to be successful. Sure. And you mentioned something that was, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. You talk about acting out of love. I mean, there is a lot of ego and ego is basically it's like a self-defense system for our bodies. Like it's, it's my big chest. It's me. I'm better than you or, or you're not a good or it's like the bully at school, right? The guy who thinks that he's so big and strong and cool on the outside and wants to pick on you because he thinks he's got it figured out. But in reality, the inside, what's inside of them, what we like to talk about, like what's inside of you isn't there. It's not connected. It's not designed to your true purpose. They're always trying to act like somebody else. But guess what? Like, you are in control of your own destiny. You, you are totally in control, no matter if it's snowing in Buffalo, New York, or in Indianapolis, if it's snowing, or if it's sunny and sunshine in Arizona in the West Coast. Sorry, I had to throw that in there. <laughs> not fair. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's not cool, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, for our, Adam, for our West Coast folks in here, I know we're loving it between AZ, Reno, uh, maybe not Reno, you get a little snow, but Texas, like, some of these warm weather states, we are very, very blessed. Like, we are very blessed to get outside. But guess what? It takes amazing people like both of you to get inside and get creative with what you can do to help impact the youth, to help impact the athletes, to still get that development. But I want to talk about the identity. Um, I think identity is big. And, and what that really means is like, who do I define myself as? Like, who do I define myself as? And something I like to talk about is not the world, not coach, not who coach says me, who I am, or my, my parents say who I am, or my other team says who I am. It's who do I say I am. And we'll talk about it in the athlete form because we've all got an identity as an athlete. I'm a really good pitcher. I'm a really good hitter. Uh, I run really fast. Maybe I'm athletic. Uh, that's my skill set. So um, we, can, we can kick it off with the BAM fam. Like, what are some things that really define, like, how do you encompass your identity as an athlete? and become like almost like live in your own identity, like, like something that serves you, that helps you become better as an athlete. Yeah. Adam, you want to start? Yeah. Like one thing I try to talk to players about is like, we're all work. It really stinks that we're not out there playing games right now. And the reason that it stinks is all of the time and effort that we've put into doing that and to preparing for those games that we were going to play. And, what I talk to kids about when they're at home working, especially during this time is what are you doing to take care of yourself so that your teammates and your coaches don't have to take care of you. Once you guys finally get out there, if you're unable to support yourself, you're not able to support the other guys that are relying on you when you guys are out there during the game. So like, as far as an identity comes, it needs to start first and foremost with what you're doing away from everybody else. Are you doing the things that you're supposed to be doing uh, in order to keep your keep up with your teammates and maybe to potentially earn that role that you've been so wanting, even though you've been maybe like a, 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 a running guy the entire time. So what are you doing on your own in order to be able to be to support yourself so that you can support other people? I think that's a, a huge thing that we have to take into account now as We've all put all this work in and now we're not, not out there playing. It's like, so which one of you guys are falling behind right now? Which one of you guys are not necessarily taking advantage of those free videos that are out there to do all of these at home drills? Like that self identity needs to be when you look in the mirror, whether you're not, you know, for a fact, you're doing everything that you can as an individual on your own without the support of others to be supportive for yourself so that you can end up being that guy that people lean on. Um, and that's where I tell most of our guys to start from because, uh, you know, you can't rely on everybody else for that stuff. We can give you as many resources as we can. We pride ourselves as coaches on being as resourceful as we possibly can and giving kids all the opportunity in the world. But if you don't take advantage of that, if you're not using that on your own, then everybody else has to take care of you. And then now we're as weak as our weakest link. I just think that's a big first portion of it. Yeah. And I'll piggyback off, piggyback off that. I think, um, you know, the first thing, when we look at this idea of reputation, right, for a lot of you, you players, like you're in middle school and high school and reputation is such a big deal. Um, for a lot of you because you know that's your social standing your friends what everybody thinks of you and all of that matters to an extent 
but reputation cannot be valued over your personal character if you want to be successful, right? So reputation is how everybody else sees you. Character is how you actually are. So when no one's watching, what are you doing? How are you living? Okay, what, what are your expectations for yourself in the way that you live, the way that you train, the way that you treat other people, the way that you treat yourself and your body and all of those aspects? So never ever sacrifice your personal character just for sheer fact of maybe going up a little bit in your reputation for others. Okay? And that will save you guys from a lot of potential trouble and hurdles as you go through your life, because you're going to have a lot of influences that are trying to get you to do things that you shouldn't do influences that are trying to change your attitude and your perspective for the negative. Okay. So when we think about character then, and I think a lot of you have probably been, been unknowingly going through this in the last couple of weeks, when you think about who you are and what your identity is for most of you in here, baseball is a big part of that or athletics in general. And that game has been stripped from you for the time being to where now a lot of you guys are stuck at home and you're not sure who you are or what to do or how to live and what that looks like. And all the coaches in here went through that when we stopped playing because it's all we knew too, right? So you got to figure out, okay, when you take baseball or sports out of it, who are you? Okay, what are the values that you hold? What's the vision that you have for your life? Where do you want to see yourself go to? And how do you get there, right? Because the number one answer that I hear to questions like that from people your age is, I don't know. And then you don't think about it, right? It's okay to not know, but it's not okay to not think about it. Because if you don't have a vision, then that's like driving a car with a blindfold on. You don't know where you're going. There's no direction, okay? So as soon as you can give direction to your life, that's like taking out app, Apple Maps, right? Or iPhone Maps, whatever that is, to where you're typing in that destination and now you have a route to actually take, okay? You know how you want to treat people and do it, right? You know how you want to live, where you want to go, then that drives the way that you work, okay? So I would say, number one, develop a vision. Figure out where that is you want to go and how you want to get there because that will lead all the steps along the way. So I think those things are huge when we talk identity. Um, and I don't think that most of you have a problem with having a poor identity. I think the biggest issue for young athletes is that you don't have any identity at all outside of your stat line from that game. So we got to move past that, right? Good old Joe LMB, trust the process, develop a process, trust that process, the results will take care of itself. That's massive, dude. Creating a vision, creating a vision, creating a vision. I, I'm going to hit on yes, that at the end. Yes. Ronnie, go ahead. Take it off, my dude. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to say that, like, I, I learned this from a coach in the past is you are a product of the people that you surround yourself with. Amen. Right. And so when yes. you are going through your whole process of what you want out of your, out of the game or out of your life, like you need to surround yourself with people who have those same visions that have those same goals that are going to push you to be a better version of yourself. And, and the one thing that you guys will learn is think about Jake and Austin. I mean, we are very, very, very into what we do. That's why we came together. We're making our, each other better through this whole thing. And think about it for you guys. I mean, you probably play catch with the guy on the team who throws just as hard as you. You know, you want to go to the cage with the guy who's going to push you to become a better version of yourself. You also have to understand there are going to be people who are going to try and drag you down during that process, right? Those are the people that are going to be left behind. And I think going off of what Jake said was – you know, if you want to be the best version of yourself, then we have yeah. to make sure that we're trying to do our best to surround ourselves with those kinds of people. And the people that are going to try and drag you down, all they're trying to do is bring you down to their level, right? Unfortunately, those people are going to be left behind. You know, so if you want to be an elite baseball player, well, then surround yourself with people who are better than you, right? If you want to be elite in math, well, then surround yourself with the best people in your math class because those are going to be the people who are going to help you the most. Those are the people who are going to drive you the most right? They're going to push you to be the best that you can possibly be. And ultimately, that's the reason why we're doing this. All of you guys chose to come on here and listen to what we have to say. Clearly, you guys want to be better. No better way to do it than, than reach out to the other 200 people that are in here and talk to them about, you know, what are you doing to get better? You know, hey, I'm 12 years old. What are you doing to get better right now? You know, now that we can't go to the cages and hit and we can't talk to these certain, like, if you want to have your identity, if you want to reach your goals and, and get to what your vision is, but surround yourself with people that have the same vision. I learned that playing, you know, I never wanted to be the number one best guy in my group because then I, I, I felt like I was not getting as, as the best I could out of that day or that week or that year. Right. I want to be around people who are going to push me. And I think that that's, that's the vision that you guys have to have, you know, especially for you high school guys that want to play in college. The best thing that you can do is reach out to guys that are doing it right now. 
what guys are in college right now playing? What are they going through? What's their process like? How many days a week are they lifting? How many days a week are they hitting and throwing a baseball? You know, once you learn that that's what those guys are doing and, and what their process is like, and you start to apply that in your own lives, you'll see yourself get to that. You'll reach that goal, right? We have to look at the people that have already been there and already have done that. You know what I mean? I think that that helps us reach our visions and our goals. We can't do this alone, right? I learned that the hard way. I try to do everything in baseball myself. And what you learn really fast is that there are other people who have easier ways and have already gotten there and done that. You know what I mean? And a lot of people that I've talked to in the past about, you know, college baseball and professional baseball, it's like, you know, I look at myself and I'm like, man, I didn't really do those until later. I wish I would have known, right? I, I say that all the time. A lot of people say that. If I would have known back then what I know now, use those people as resources. They will help you reach your vision and your goals. I think that's ultimately what it is, is surround yourself with the right people and you're going you're gonna to see how far you guys can go. Yeah, you guys mentioned two really good points. And if, we, if we're taking notes out there, there's two things that you need to write down right now. And I'm going to say you need to because I'm the teacher now. I'm taking Jake's <laughs> shoes as the teacher. I, wish I, I don't wish I'd talk, but I don't teach. But one day I'm going to create a school that is literally so innovative that it, it rewrites the whole how schools are done, this whole school system, because there's a better way to do things to get the most out of you guys to live your best life and to be freaking just bought in on your dream and be sold on where you want to go. Number one, That's create right. a vision for your life. Jake said it right there. Boom. Create a vision for your life. We've got to create a vision. If we don't know where we're going, we're never going to get there. One, we got to know where we're going. Two, we got to believe we can get there. So if I want to be a collegiate athlete, I got to believe that I can be a collegiate athlete. If I want to be a, a starter on my high school team, I got to believe I, I can do it. If I want to be a professional athlete, it's really, really hard. It's one of the hardest things in the world to do. Less than 1% of the athletes ever get there, right? Less than 1% of the athletes ever get there. But guess what? there's a 1% that does get there. We can get there, but you got to believe that you can get there. And then number two, copy genius. Ronnie said, right? Surround yourself with eagles. Surround yourself with people that are going to help you get to where you want to go. And copy genius. Like, what does that mean? Well, copy the people who got there. Ask questions to the, the college kids who just graduated your high school or graduated your scout team and ask them, hey, what are you guys doing at Washington State? What are you guys doing at Niagara? What are you guys doing in South Carolina? What are you guys doing at the junior college that you play at locally? Or maybe you have a friend or somebody. If you don't have a resource, there's four people in here that can give you some of that information or you can reach out to any of our platforms and we will give you a straight up honest answer to help you get to where you want to go there's so many different things that we can do so one create a vision we got to have a vision for our life Two, copy genius like it's there somebody's done it before there's been hundreds and thousands of big leaguers right thousands of big leaguers but guess what what did they do to get there if i want to be there what do i got to do to get there every single day is me playing 10 hours of Fortnite going to help me get there i don't know maybe maybe not I mean, just understand how do we prioritize our time? How do we take ownership of our time and what we do, what we're in control of, like we talked about earlier, and use that to help us get to where we want to go? Because there's so many different things that can pop up. There's so many obstacles. Mom and dad could get sick. Um, I, my bus breaks down to school and I don't make it there. Maybe there's the snow or now there's this weird COVID deal where none of us can go play baseball. All of our high school seasons, bang. No travel baseball. We don't even know if we're going to play in the summer. And now we've got to learn how to overcome this. Well, guess what? There's no better time to develop grit, to be bold, and to step into fear of the unknown. Because this summer is going to be the most important summer of your life no matter what age you are, 9, 10, 11, 17, 18, 19. I don't care. As a coach, it's going to be one of the most important summers of our lives and our careers, not only for our businesses, but for our athletes and how we handle this situation because we've got to step up as leaders and set a good example for the ones that are before us. So as athletes during this time, like ask yourself, where can I get better? What are some things that I need to grow in? Where can I improve? Is it my mental game? Is it my physical strength? Because I just, I'm just not that strong. Maybe it's my mobility. Maybe it's my glove work. Maybe it's my swings. Well, guess what? You can do so many things at home right now to improve on that. I see somebody in here, um, Adam and Kyle. I think you guys got a weight room in the background, dude. Like you guys got some blue weights in the back. That, that's freaking cool. Like maybe not go pump the weights and do some bench press, but hey, you got access. Some of us don't have access. Some of us are in an apartment building where there's no outside and we don't have any outdoors. It's just a little doggy park and a patch of grass with a bunch of poop in it. Well, I can't go out there and do what I need to do, but I can go on a run. I can go do mirror swings. I can go do uh, wiffle balls outside. I can throw a tennis ball against the wall as long as mom and dad don't get mad at me, and I can do some scoops with my glove work. There's different ways that we can get better, and that's what we want to leave you with is how can you get better during this time? Find somewhere in your career, evaluate yourself. Let's be mature about it. Like, Where can I get better? Where can I grow? What are some things that I struggle with a little bit? 
and be honest with yourself. Honesty is huge. If we can be honest with ourselves at an early age, we're going to develop that trait going up and build that for our future. It's so, so key. I know these guys can totally attest to that as well, but um, that's what I've got for you. I don't know if any of you all have something to leave a mouth on. Um, before I end, if you have questions about any of this stuff, please reach out. We'll put the information in the chat again. Please reach out yes. to any of the social medias, the Dugout Coalition, because we're here to help. Have your parents email us. If they had a question, hey, what did you mean by being a good teammate? Or hey, can you elaborate on how to create a vision? Or hey, uh, my son's struggling with this. Like, where can I go with my confidence? How do I improve that? Like, you guys said something good, but I don't really understand still. Like, please reach questions. You have most of our numbers. Give us a call, give us a text. Um, I just wanted to throw that in there before um, you take it, Jake. Yeah, I think I think that's great. I will put if you guys could stay off the chat because I'm going to put the social media stuff back in there. Um, and what we'll do today on the uh, Baseball Coalition Instagram too is we're going to post on our story um, a reflection question from today. So we just want to know your takeaways. Like what what did you hear that you think you can take away one big thing? Um, we would love to get some responses on that from you guys. That would be huge. Um, and then my challenge to you guys personally is all of you have at least one teammate who's not in here right now. Okay, this week is all mental. Then we'll go into offense. We'll go into defense. Um, we got four big weeks, strength, performance, speed, agility, all of that. Okay, so a lot of you guys can think of at least one person that would benefit from this that isn't here right now. So my goal for you guys is invite somebody. That link we sent you, send to one other person. Get them in here tomorrow so that we can go from 200 people in here to 400, right? If all of you bring one person, we'll double. So let's see how big we can make this thing. Okay, yes, this is about you learning and doing that. That's huge. But it's also about just coming together as a baseball community and talking the game and being in here together, seeing as we can't play. All right. Um, I'll add one other thing, and that's if you're, if you're in here, okay, let's be respectful in the chat. Okay, most of you guys are pretty good. Some of you guys are talking about TikTok and you're off base. Um, if you're going to be in here and not focus on what we're doing, then you're one of the people that Ryan was talking about that's just going to get left behind while the rest of us grow. All right, so we want to take everybody with us, but we don't control your attitude and what you do, right? So let's be respectful of everybody else, be in here for the right reasons and try to grow. I'm excited for the next three weeks and four days. It's going to be huge for you guys, but please find us on social media. I've Austin listed everything in there. Okay. Any questions you have, send them to any of us and we will definitely get back with you guys and make sure that you're informed about what you're doing. But it was awesome to have this many people in here on day one. I'm excited to keep it going tomorrow. Yeah. Ronnie, what do you yeah, got? Man. Yeah. Last thing for me is I just, uh, first off, I just want to thank all you guys for being here. I mean, I know you guys are taking time out of your day. Um, I know this is probably cutting into some video game time for you guys, but um, <laughs> under, understand how much value you guys are going to get. I mean, and the one thing that I look at is you got guys, you got people in here that do this every single day, all day long. And all we do is think about you guys all the time and how we can help you guys get better. Um, so really take the next couple of weeks and try and take in as much as you guys can. Um, obviously today's big thing was attitude, but you know, really reflect on this, write some stuff down. And then if you guys do have any questions, I know we didn't really get a ton of ton of questions, but please ask, you know, this is the one thing that they like, were here for that. Like, that's what we are here for. We're here to answer your questions. What can we do to help you guys? We're here for you. So, so please ask us as much as you can over the next couple of weeks. We'll do whatever we can to help you guys out as much as we can. But that, that's really all I got is, is please ask us. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Adam, you got anything? Yeah. Uh, last thing I'll say is uh, I saw this online the other day and it's a real great point um, and it adds into what we talked about today. We talked about identity and controlling what we can control. And right now we can control what we're doing on our own. They haven't closed down running. They haven't canceled pushups. They haven't canceled visualization. They haven't canceled at home drills, all that kind of stuff. I saw some guy the other day uh, ran around his driveway enough to run an entire marathon. He did 26.2 miles in his driveway and he tracked it on his, on his watch. Not saying you have to do that but control you can control and do things at home you, and you know that there's stuff that you can be getting in you know in your mind whether or not you're putting in that effort and taking advantage of that time that you're just you're just sitting at home I wanted to make sure that when all this stuff went down that I came out of all of this being stuck at home ahead in some fashion so I'm reading more I'm writing more I'm visualiz visualizing more I'm running more I'm doing all kinds of things to try to make sure that I come out ahead and that's what I hope is 
that I can control. It's going to control my identity. And I hope that you guys do that same thing. And we're going to continue to try to provide as many resources, resources as we can throughout this entire time. So ask questions. Thanks for being here. And let's continue to try to double up how many people we have here throughout the day. Get your teammates on here. It's a big thing going. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you guys personally um, from all of us for hopping on here. This is, takes bold action, right? We, we want to be good. We want to be the best. You got to be bold to be the best. And this is taking action. Like Ronnie said, you might have cut into some video game time. I got the Fortnite dances, the double dab going on, the one of these. But guess what? Like, an hour of this is so much more worth it for you and your career. If you really want to go where you want to go, like Jake said, creating a vision, this is what you need to be doing. It's, if there's no ifs, ands, or buts, this is what you need to be doing. We look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow, same time, 1 p.m. If you do have buddies or friends, send them the link. We've got up to 500 in here. If we get over 500, that's a good thing. So we'll, we'll adjust on that. We'll have time to adjust on, on that. on the fly, man. Let's hey, we'll get it on the fly. But, hey, fellas, appreciate you guys, everyone that came on, guys and girls. Thank you. Have a beautiful day. We'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. See you tomorrow. See you guys. See you. Peace.